If you're interested in the Leupold Mark V HD, you're gonna to wanna to check our two-part series starting with this video. Gavin Gay here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with Travis Fox. Travis, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Gavin. Good to be here. This story is gonna be a little bit different. Normally I do things sequentially, but we're here to talk about the Leupold Mark V HD scope. This is an awesome scope. We've both shot this on multiple rifles. How many rifles have we had this on? I think three. We've got the lightweight Carbon Hunter, the Six Dasher, and then the Zeus. The Creed. Foundation yeah. 25 Creed. That's good scope. That we did. So we've done a lot of different things with it. Now I actually filmed an unboxing, what's included, mounting and epoxy bedding the scope to the rings story quite a while back, but it got lost in the shuffle during the last SHOT Show, which was a while ago because of COVID, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna break this down into two parts. I wanna publish that content. So I'm gonna cut back to what I just talked about, the unboxing, the install and the config. Then we'll be back in a moment to talk about what's next. Show us the loophole, Mark V. That's the feedback I've gotten from multiple of you on YouTube, and here it is. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. I am almost completely done with my 6.5 PRC ultra lightweight full custom long range hunting gun. And I thought to myself, what optics am I gonna put atop this awesome rifle? Then I remembered, how about the Leupold Mark V? That's what people wanna see. This is the Leupold Mark V 7 to 35 by 36, 35 mil tube, first focal plane optic. This is top quality. And I think it's gonna be a great complement to this rifle. So in this video, I'm gonna open the box. I'm gonna show you what's in it. I'm gonna get it mounted on the scope. We're gonna do some shooting with it. I'm gonna do some evaluation with it, share feedback, but make sure you're subscribed with notifications because I'm gonna have a lot more content around this rifle and 6.5 PRC where this scope will be featured and will be a core part of the experience. So let's get this box open, see what is inside. Sunshade, love to see that. And wow, look at this. Behold, <laughs> look at this. 35 mil tube, this thing is massive. Wow. And look at those turrets. And, oh yeah, that's a really awesome reticle. Wow, super clear. I can see all the way through the shop window up onto the hillside up there. Let's take a look at the sunshade here. Love that. So there's our sunshade in place. We've got caps, front and rear. Just so gonna slip on. Look at that. Definitely liking what I'm seeing so far. So the next step is gonna to be to get the rifle prepared. We're gonna get a ring basis on in the rings, mount the scope, and then it's out to the shooting range. So here it is, scope and rings installed on the rifle. I wanted to make sure that this job was done perfectly and I decided to use a different technique this time. The goal is to make sure that the scope tube and the scope base and the rings are all in perfect alignment and that there's even pressure around that scope tube. No distortion of the scope, no distortion of the action. You can actually put a slight stress on the action by clamping down a scope install that's misaligned. And there's a couple options to get that perfect alignment. One is to lap the scope rings. You need a lapping bar of the appropriate size. This scope has a 35 millimeter tube, so I decided to employ a technique that I learned at Gordy Gritter's class. In the last video I published, you're gonna to wanna to check that out, I covered epoxy bedding the barreled action to the stock, which I also learned at Gordy's class. And this time we're gonna use the same Marintex epoxy to bed the scope tube to the bottom half of the scope rings. And this technique is really pretty simple, you just gotta pay attention to some important details. The first thing I did was to establish what the proper eye leaf relief was gonna be. So I put the rifle 
in a vise and I got behind the rifle and I moved the scope tube back and forth at max magnification, at 35 power magnification, to see exactly where that point would be where I had a really clear picture and I was exactly in the middle of that eye relief range. I then took that scope position and adjusted the position of the rings on the scope base to make sure that the scope would be centered in the rings. I then torqued the lower half of the rings down to the base at 65 inch pounds while pushing forward. You got to push forward so that you seat the rings to the pick rail, how they will be seated and how they will press against each other under recoil. Then it was time to mix up some of the Marine Tech's epoxy. Five parts epoxy to one part catalyst. I wiped some car wax, carnauba wax, on the scope tube to make sure that the epoxy wouldn't stick to the scope tube. I also waxed the inside and around the sides of the rings and the screws as well. Don't want epoxy to stick to any of that. And then coated the inside of the lower half of the rings with epoxy. I was very sparing up at the top because I didn't want it to squish between the lower and the, the ring cap portions there and was very careful to get it even. Then it was time to set the scope in place. And I set it not exactly where I wanted it, but that's not super critical at this point because we're gonna pop it out later. So I set it down, put on the ring caps, and very, very carefully torqued things down so that there was just a very slight amount of pressure. And that's gonna squeeze the epoxy out the sides. And again, just like with bedding the barreled action to the stock, we're gonna take Q-tips and wipe off the excess. And I even used some blue towels to get you know some of the excess off of the scope tube, which had been waxed. And then cranked up the heat in the room and left it for a day. And then came back, removed the caps, and then popped the scope out of the bottom half of the rings there. And it doesn't, shouldn't take a whole lot of force to do that if you've properly used your release agent, in this case, the carnauba wax. And sure enough, it popped out pretty easily. And with the file, I just dressed the tops where there was some excess epoxy. And I had waxed the top of the lower half of the, of the rings as well. So it didn't stick to that. The, the file just sort of popped it off. And did a little bit of a, a dressing around the outer edges. And then was able to set the scope back in place, put on the ring caps, and torque things down. And this was 28 inch pounds. Always check your manufacturer's specifications. For the loophole rings, they come with an insert. And inside the insert, you'll have the torque for the ring to base and ring cap to lower ring half torque specifications. Double check that. I use a torque screwdriver. Um, it's a good insurance policy just to make sure that your torque is correct. Alternating pattern for the ring caps and then that final snugging, click, 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 click on each of the ring caps. And I got it installed perfectly because as I'm looking through the scope, either offhand or prone, I'm in a nice comfortable position with perfect eye relief, a full sight picture at 35 power magnification. And it's a little bit less picky for eye relief at, at minimum magnification, still looks, looks super. And there's multiple options for leveling. When I did the install, I'm using a Wheeler Engineering bubble level on the pick rail and on the top of the turret. And that ensures that the scope body is gonna be level to the rifle. You may or may not want to run it that way. Some people run their rifle slightly canted depending on the ergonomics that you want. In my follow-up story, so in my field shooting and final evaluation story for this scope, I will do a reticle alignment test as well because that's an important part of evaluating the scope. We'll also do a tracking test and look through the scope at different magnifications and different ranges. Because I'm running this scope level with the pick rail, I was able to install my billet MK machine bubble level right off the pick rail. 35 millimeter tube, specialty diameter, I don't have a bubble level for that diameter. Not a problem with that MK machine 
bubble level. The further you go out, the more important that bubble level is going to be to make sure that your windage and your elevation adjustments are, are perfectly parallel to the corresponding axes uh, with the scope. So the install went really well and I've had a limited amount of time to shoot with it as well. During the barrel break-in, another story that you should check out, uh, I used the scope at 100 yards. I think I was at about 28 power just for good uh, alignment with the, the target spots that I was shooting at. And I did a really precise dialing in of my parallax. And I got it just perfectly so that I could move my head left to right and up and down. It had absolutely zero movement of that center dot uh, compared to the target. And this thing shot awesome. I had one of my groups of three that I was shooting between cleanings for the barrel break-in was 0.218, I think it was. And so I find this scope really easy to use. Before we conclude, I did want to go over some of the features and specs that make this scope the perfect rifle scope for this particular application. I'm going to be long range hunting with this rifle and I'm also going to be long range shooting at steel targets, at electronic targets, at a thousand yards and well beyond. I did want something with a good magnification range. This has 7 to 35, it's first focal plane, so you do get a scaling of the reticle, but when you're at low power, there's sort of tapered indicators around the edges that help you find the center of the reticle visually, which are really, really helpful. This scope has the Combat Competition Hunting, or CCH, reticle, which is kind of like a permutation on a Christmas tree reticle. You've got holdover for elevation and for windage, but it's got quarter mil hash marks so that the reticle is a little bit less busy and a little bit easier to discern details with and to establish your holdover with. The scope itself comes in at 33 ounces, which, hey, for a lightweight hunting rifle, that's kind of heavy, isn't it? Well, this is actually about 20 ounces lighter than some of the other scopes in its class. So I feel like the flexibility that it offers, the optical quality, it's HD glass, it's got a lifetime warranty, it's got a large magnification range, it's very, very high quality, it comes with the sunshade, it comes with the throw lever, and there's kind of an interesting turret situation on this scope as well. It's got a turret lock, and there's a button right here. So if you hit the button and go up, you can go up and then it's gonna hit the zero, which clicks, and then if you hit the button again, you can go up. But what's cool about this is it'll click. If you push the button in, you can go down a little bit. Have you ever had that situation where you needed to dial down for whatever reason? Could have been wind or something like that? And if you have a conventional zero stop, you might feel a little bit stuck with that. Well, I like the fact that it's got the positive zero, but engaging the button, it does allow you to go down. Furthermore, when you push the button in, when you go up a full revolution, you'll notice the button goes flush, and that tells you you're at up one revolution. And then if you go around another revolution, you'll actually see the button withdraw into the turret housing. So you have a visual indication of where you're at, you can always dial down and have it click to zero. There's also a windage cap, so you can either run with or without this cap, and the zero marker is sort of up where you can see it if you're prone. So it's a little hard to see a conventional zero mark here, but uh, with this scope it's up here and I can actually see that really well, especially if my throw level lever is up towards the top. So just some things about this scope that I think are really handy. And finally, the overall adjustment range. This thing has 100 MOA of elevation. That's equivalent to 29.1 mils. That is a lot. Equally impressive is its windage adjustment range. It's got 50 MOA of windage adjustment, which is equivalent to 14 and a half mil. 
And for a long range scope, that just gives you more flexibility. And anybody who's shot towards ELR distances knows that more flexibility is a good thing. So fast forward to today, we've put a lot of miles under this scope. This scope has seen a number of shots through it. Well, <laughs> on different rifles, uh, we've shot a lot. Yeah. You shot a PRS match with it? I did. I, this six dasher right, uh, rifle right here with the bat action and the Manners T2A gap stock, benchmark barrel. This is a killer rig. Let's see, who made this rifle? You did? I did. It yeah, is custom a shooter. Build. It is a shooter. It's, and of we, course, both, we both have shot some pretty yes. tiny groups with it. You can check out that story. It's on the YouTube channel and on the blog. Really good success with this particular rifle. And so that was, I stole this scope from the lightweight carbon hunter. I would still use this on a lightweight hunting rifle. Yes, it's overkill. Yes, it's heavier than some of the lighter yeah. scopes, but it just works so well. It works so well. It's the testing we've done on it has been very good. Mm -hmm. Good reticle alignment, very repeatable on the clicks, good focus. It just plain works very well all the time. So, you know, to expand on what you're saying, let's cover real quick what people can look forward to in part two of this story. Okay, so we're putting this on our testing rig, on our scope testing rig. Our own optics test uh, rig. Only Ultimate Reloader has this. <laughs> and we're running it through a battery of tests. Some of them we're still developing, mm -hmm. still kind of cleaning up the process a little bit, but uh, many of them we are able to really pick apart what these scopes can do. Like I said earlier, reticle alignment. Mm -hmm. We can check the turret accuracy. Does it click to where it's supposed to? Does it come mm -hmm. back to where it's supposed to? Is it focusing like it says it is? We can check the, you know. Image distortion. Yeah, the image distortion. Magnification, magnification accuracy. Everything. Yeah. It's, the testing that we've been able to do here has been very cool and this scope has performed great. Yeah, what we wanted to do was take the subjective nature of scope reviews out of the process and that's yep. definitely what we're working towards. Yep. So. Make sure that you're subscribed with notifications. We're going to be publishing that part two story, which we've already started filming. Yep. We're actually most of the way done with it. It'll be coming up very soon. Yeah, very shortly on the channel. Uh, we love this scope. If you have a Mark V HD, we would love to hear what you're using it for, how you like it, that kind of thing. So drop a comment and start a discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.